In the context of an electric vehicle, the term architecture refers to the components of an EV system, how the components fit together into subsystems, and how the subsystems convert electric power into the motive force for the vehicle. In this EVU mini course, we'll take a look at the basic elements of an EV architecture. And in the next mini course in this sequence, we'll examine how these elements can be organized into alternative architectures. The simplest of all EV architectures is the battery electric vehicle, the BEV. In a BEV, there is a limited set of basic components associated with the propulsion of the vehicle. Looking at the diagram on your screen from left to right, electricity from the grid is conditioned by a charger represented in orange that may be part of the vehicle or a separate component. The charger passes electricity to the battery, shown in yellow. Energy stored in the battery is passed through control electronics, represented in gray, that moderate the energy flow and pass it to an electric motor, shown in blue. Regenerative braking, in green, translates kinetic energy of the car's forward motion into electricity and returns energy back to the battery. Let's take a look at each of these components in just a bit more detail. In an earlier mini, or co mini course, I mentioned that the battery is the heart of an EV. In fact, the bigger and better the battery, the better the EV. The higher its performance, the longer its range, and the more utility it offers to the owner. But what do we mean by bigger and better? Bigger refers or doesn't refer to the size of the battery, but rather to the storage capacity measured in kilowatt hours. Better refers to the battery's ability to recharge quickly as measured in hours and minutes. Although battery storage capacity and recharge times have improved dramatically over the past decade, there is much to be done to improve them still further. But even today, storage capacity and recharge times are sufficient to make EVs competitive with ICE vehicles. The physics of an electric motor is a bit beyond the scope of this mini course, but a few basics are important. Coils of copper wire run through a stack of thin steel plates and form something called a stator. The rotor is a steel shaft with copper bars running through it. It rotates and ultimately turns the wheels of the EV. But what makes the rotor rotate? The flow of alternating current into the copper windings of the stator creates a magnetic field. Alternating current causes the field to vary between north and south, appearing to move in a circular path. The rotor chases the magnetic field and rotates as a consequence. Of course, there's a bit more to it than that, but that should give you at least a general idea of what's happening. The electric motor is unquestionably the workhorse of modern industry and will soon become an important motive force in the car industry. Electric motors are remarkably simple. They have very few moving parts and have extremely high reliability, partly due to the smaller number of moving parts. Electric motors have a square torque curve, meaning that you get impressive acceleration off the line. And their variable speed, meaning that there is no need for a transmission, eliminating hundreds of parts that can and sometimes do fail in an ICE vehicle. Electric motors are efficient. Efficiency is the degree to which a motor converts input energy to output power. For electric motors, the efficiency is quite high in the range of 80 to 90%. The efficiency of an internal combustion engine is only in the 20 to 30 percent range, a significant difference. Finally, electric motors have zero emissions. There are even more benefits. 
the electric motor can be electronically modified, enabling it to become a generator. This allows regenerative braking that converts the forward motion of the car, called kinetic energy, into electricity that recharges the battery. Engine performance enhancements can often be achieved with software and control electronics. An electric motor rotates around a single axis, leading to reduced vibration and a longer life. And finally, we've been building and using electric motors for well over a hundred years. This isn't bleeding edge tech. The U.S. Department of Energy describes the control electronics for an EV in the following manner. The electric vehicle controller is the electronics package that operates between the batteries and the motor to control the electric vehicle's speed and acceleration, much like a carburetor does in an older gasoline-powered vehicle. The controller performs the following functions. It transforms DC current from the battery into AC and regulates the energy flow from the battery. It reverses the ro motor rotation, and that's necessary so the vehicle can go in reverse, and it converts the motor into a generator so that the kinetic energy can be used to recharge the battery during regenerative braking. Kinetic energy is a function of the car's mass and its velocity squared. The mass of a car is huge and when a car is going fast, its velocity squared is also significant. That means that there's a lot of kinetic energy to capture. That's why your brake pads become very, very hot as you brake a conventional vehicle. That's unfortunate because the kinetic energy of an internal combustion engine car is lost as heat when it could be reused. The transformation is really quite simple. The electric motor is electronically switched and becomes a generator that produces current that is sent back to the battery recharging it. But be careful with your assumptions here. Not all of the kinetic energy is converted into current because there are losses in the conversion. If there were no losses, EVs would be perpetual motion machines, and that's simply not possible. But EVs do capture as much as 40 to 50 percent of a car's kinetic energy and reuse it, and that's pretty cool. As we'll see in another EV mini, EVU mini course, it also makes driving an EV a bit different. Shockingly, you rarely need to hit your brakes. Let's summarize. The basic EV architecture is a simple architecture in automotive terms. That's not to say that EVs don't deliver sophisticated tech, they do. But the component parts of an architecture are relatively simple in number, and that means Fewer parts can fail, there's considerably less complexity, and because things don't fail, lower maintenance costs and less frequent maintenance visits.